I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. Ha ha. Yes, trying a little different angle this week. There's more stuff behind me in this shot. What are you going to do? So, that's actually my studio back there that I normally sit at. <laughs> Matter of fact, the angry bird is that red thing right there. <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> I just wanted to uh, share that little tidbit of information with you because it's just not relevant at all. So, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. You know, as I do this on a Saturday, it's the Saturday before Christmas. Ha! <laughs> yes. I do a little moonlighting on the side, so to speak, during Christmas, as you might expect. Anyway, just saying, me and Rudolph were tight. Anyway, so, you know, um, last week there were issues with the netcast, so I'm just going to go ahead and apologize now. I'm sorry. How was that? Sincere enough? Um, <laughs> the problem was Fred was on vacation. You know, it's around the holidays. Fred, he goes on vacation. That's why it was the Fredless Linux Edition. I believe that's right. Is that, is that what we called it? Yes, the Fredli Fredless Linux Edition, which is hard to say. <laughs> Fred or no Fred. Fred is back this week. Hi, Fred. Uh, which is a good thing, because when he was gone, I referred to the Citrix Systems lower third, and there was no Fred to put up the lower third, and so I'm saying, uh, as it says here, and there was no lower third. <sighs> Sorry. So, Citrix is taking a holiday this week as well, so... They're not sponsoring us this week. Nothing, no re not because we didn't have the lower third, okay? Don't panic. Just taking a vacation like Fred did last week. He's back now, but he's going to take off on Christmas, as am I. You know, so. But this is the, the Merry Christmas, a little early edition of Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Just saying. And I trust you have a very, 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 very Merry Christmas. And I actually said that without my tongue stumbling, which is nearly a miracle in and of itself. <laughs> At any rate, there's just all kinds of cool toys, including handheld devices like my phone here. This is the old, literally old, well over two years old, Droid X Android phone. But I have found an amazing new talent that it has by installing an app called the Roku app. You know I love Roku. I just love my Roku boxes. I have one in the bedroom and one in the living room. And now I can control both of them through my phone. <laughs> That's just too amazing. So, and, and, you can, you can do things like check out all your channels at once. See, there's all of my various channels available. Cool stuff, I'm telling you. So anyway, I did a little demo video of how it works. So let's check that out right now. Okay, we're going to demo something here that is awesome. 
dude. So here's the thing. Here is my HDTV here in my living room before you. And here, as I bring it in from the side, is my phone, which is going to be out of focus. But that's okay, you can see the phone. And it's running Roku Remote. Now, check this out. I'm gonna hit a button here. And you notice I'm on the remote, on the phone, hitting the button. Isn't that just too cool? So, but here's what's cooler. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Notice I'm sitting here on techpodcast.com, which by the way is an awesome Roku channel that you should go to because it is awesome, <laughs> as I said, and I'm part of the Tech Podcast Network, so I have a little, little prejudice there. <clears throat> but here's what's cool about the Roku remote on my Android phone. I push the button, launch channel by voice, and then I simply say, Netflix. Netflix. It has to hear you. And there's Netflix. Isn't that just so cool? I like it. Okay. Pandora. <laughs> I'm just giddy with excitement over this. Okay, check this out. Oh, it's gonna actually start playing. That's loud. Dr. Bill Bailey. And it takes me to the drbillbailey.net channel <laughs> because I voice activated it to my own channel. How cool is that? And you'll notice on the drbillvalley.net channel, we have video and audio. And if we go to video, we have, of course, the Dr. Bill Show, Vert Zine, Handheld Hack, and Word of Faith Netcast. That's just so cool. But I love the voice activated. That's just mind boggling. So I had to show that to you. That's just too cool. Let me, uh, let me think of another one here. Let's see if it'll do this. Speak Faith. Takes me to the speakfaith.tv channel, which is another one of our channels. Twit. Takes you to Twit. <laughs> you gotta love voice activated Roku. I mean, how cool is that? So anyway, I just wanted to show you that because it's just too awesome not to. Dude, you gotta admit, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, oh, I so enjoyed that when I played with it this morning. I actually woke my wife up. She came in and said, what are you doing? <laughs> so I showed her and she was like, dude, <laughs> so cool. I mean, it is, so. I just had to show you to share and enjoy, as they say on Hitchhikers. Okay, let's go to the blog, shall we? The blog, of course, is Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, dot TV. TV, of course, the dot TV because it is a multimedia extravaganza. Yes. Okay, we're talking about this item, Mist Server an open source media server. Now there is another open source media server called Wowza. Wowza. <laughs> uh, it's open source, sort of. There is a free version, but it, it's like you have a minimum of 10 users, you know, and then you have to pay for it after that. And it's a very powerful server. It's cool, but this is a different one. Usually when I think of open source media servers, I think of Wowza, so that's why I'm mentioning that. We're not even going to be talking about that today, but Mist Server is a new one, and it is now open source, and it does cool stuff. It says, we are proud to announce after three years of research, development, and testing, we are now ready to release our multi-standard multimedia streaming server. Yes. 
Myth Server is a true next generation media server designed with the future needs of media in mind. Our software allows for limitless scalability, is extremely efficient, compact, and stable with the added benefit of the lowest total cost of ownership. Basically, they're cheap. <laughs> Cheaper than Wowza. So, I wanted to mention that to you in case you had need of a multimedia media server. It handles all kinds of different formats and it's just basically pretty cool. I may actually try playing with that just a bit. Now, the next few items, next two items, I'm actually going to take out of order. Is that allowed? Well, yes, because I'm in control. Ha, ha, ha. Fred has a point. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, I'm taking them out of order because the, the item after the item that would be the next item is germane to the discussion of the item that would be the next item. Okay. <laughs> the item after the item I'm about to talk about is that the Psy Video Gangnam Style makes YouTube history. <laughs> It has passed the 1 billion views mark. Wow. That's a lot of people watching him dance around like he's riding a horse. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Meaning there are at least 1 billion bored people in the world <laughs> that like to watch this strange video. I got to admit, it is very catchy and I enjoyed watching it a couple of times myself. <laughs> so, but the item that is truly the next item, I got to that one early because of this one, is that NASA, the Johnson Space, Space Laboratory Place, they did a video that is a parody of the Gangnam Style Psy video and it's called NASA Johnson Style. <laughs> yes. And I want to play <clears throat> just a few seconds of this video. This is officially a review of the NASA Johnson Style video. That's how I'm getting away with it. Okay. <laughs> so, the main reason I want to show it to you is the cool space footage. Dude, so check it out uh, over here. <laughs> check it out over here. Are you ready? Here we go. Ready for the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I'm a little silly. You knew that. That's I'm pretty Johnson sure. Star. Matter of fact, I'm very confident you knew that. But I wanted to show you just a little bit, just a taste, just a taste of the video to entice you to go to drbill.tv and watch the whole video. Blow your mind. <laughs> ah, yes. It's a public service that I do. The other item I have here for you is that Apple's iTunes podcast submission system has been shut down over Christmas. There's a lot of stuff being shut down over Christmas. Fred, like I said, last week took a vacation. So what are you going to do? But anyway, so if you have a desire to submit a podcast between now and the end of the year, tough. <laughs> you can't on iTunes. So just hang in there. Hang tight. It'll be back after December the 27th, Pacific time. December the 27th is going to be the same Pacific time or Easter time. It's going to be the same day. I don't understand. They don't have like a time. They just said Pacific time. But what are you going to do? They're weird. They're Apple. Just saying. Um, <clears throat> here's another thing. 
that I was going to mention, and that is, <laughs> I have hair falling in my face from my head. That's odd. <laughs> anyway, today as I record this is December the 22nd. I had to look at the clock to see <laughs> on my notebook. December the 22nd, which means the world did not end yesterday. The Mayans were wrong. I'm pretty sure the world didn't end yesterday. I think I know by now. Yes, <laughs> so would you. So don't trust the Mayans to tell you when the world's going to end. That's the hint for today. Oh, look. Oh, wait. It's over here. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it, but Roku was showing up reflected out of the glass behind. There it is again. There it is right there. Roku. <laughs> I get distracted by these things. Oh, squirrel. Anyway, I'm in an odd mood today because I had such fun with my phone. <laughs> I did. Anyway. Wow. Fred says, move along. It's time for a Geek Software of the Week. Okay, Fred. Boy, give me a break. He takes a day off and then he gets all huffy. <laughs> anyway, it is time for the Geek Software of the Week. <laughs> uh, Geek Software of the Week this week is Virtua Win, which is an interesting name for software. It's kind of, you know, kind of neat sounding virtual wind win not wind win <laughs> for windows it's virtual and windows stuck together doesn't sound nearly as good that way anyway um now what it is is if, if you <laughs> like i said i'm giddy i am giddy let's calm down a minute <sighs> Deep cleansing breaths. <clears throat> so, <laughs> hi there. Um, virtual Win is an implementation of multiple windows. Now, not virtualized windows, okay? This doesn't have anything to do with virtualization in the sense of one operating system running under another operating system, okay? Let's get that out of the way right up front. However, in Linux, you can have multiple windows and you can have things running in those windows, multitasking, and you can switch between those windows. Well, in, in Windows, Windows, <laughs> you can't do that. Virtual Win allows you to do that, gives you that functionality to where you have a desktop manager that allows the Windows operating system, everything from Win 9X, like Windows 95, 98, M-E-N-T, Windows 2K, XP, Windows 2003, Vista, Windows 7. And I haven't tried it on 8, but it probably would work on 8 as well. So if you try it and it doesn't work, don't blame me because I haven't tried it. And they're not advertising that it does, but I think that's just because they haven't updated their website. You know what I'm saying? Okay, anyway. Basically works under most all versions of Windows. It's a virtual desktop manager that lets you organize applications over several virtual desktops, also called workspaces. So that would be virtual workspace. <laughs> Just silly. Virtual desktops are very common in Unix, Linux, and once you get accustomed to using them, they become an essential part of a productive workflow. Sounds so impressive. But it is, and it's cool. So, take advantage of this Geek Software of the Week to make yourself more productive. As for me, I'm going to play with the phone <laughs> and find out what other cool apps are out there that I haven't discovered yet, like the Roku app. Did I mention I'm on vacation? So I'm not being very productive. No. There's Roku appearing up there again in the class. I'm easily amused. But remember until next time that the doctor is out of here.
Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillDaily.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.